have to start in Paris. It's been another huge night on the track at the Stade de France that saw a, such a dramatic 200 metre final. Uh, Noah Lyles, the man that everyone tipped for gold in that 200 metre, the 100 metre champion, was by far the pre race favourite. But just have a look at this shot here. This is Noah Lyles off the USA. Finishing in third, look at the distance between him and the actual winner from uh, Botswana. Let's say Lee Tobogo. Absolutely incredible race. Let's get more on this story, though, because there's uh, some breaking news this evening that we have to get our heads around. We can go back to Paris again and speak to Miriam Walker Khan. And Miriam, my goodness, how did this race play out? And tell us about the condition of Noah Lyles now. Yeah, going into this race, Noah Lyles was a huge favourite after winning the 100 metres and because of the fact that the 200 metres is his event, he did that long before he kind of transitioned to the 100 as well. He's got three world titles in the 200 and he was confident in that. He was hoping to become the first man since Usain Bolt to do the sprint double uh, and the first man in US history since Carl Lewis 40 years ago. And he literally bounced onto the track when they were announcing the runners at the start of the race he looked fit, he looked healthy, he looked excited. We know he psychs out the other athletes a lot in races, but he looked very ready for that race. He caught a, a good bend, but then he just didn't really transition off that bend into the home straight as well as we normally see him do. And like you said, it was Botswana's Lestile Tobogo who got that gold medal in a, a real shock of these games, I think. But after the race, uh, we saw Noel Isles being carried off in a wheelchair. He was wearing a mask as well at one point, talking to media. And USA Track and Field have confirmed that he had tested positive for COVID two days ago. This obviously isn't what Noel Isles had planned. He has said so many times that he wants to emulate Usain Bolt and do that sprint double. Um, and he's spoken so much about it in the lead up to this race as well. But he leaves Paris with two medals, one in the 100, that gold and this bronze medal in the 200 metres. But they, there will be questions now over whether he should have run that race today, having known for, for two days that he's got COVID. People will ask that and USA Track and Field have said it was his choice. Yeah, I have a feeling that uh, no one was going to be able to stop Noah Lars from running that race. Now, Miriam, before I let you go, there's been some history in the field for Pakistan in the javelin. Yeah, Pakistan just won their first ever Olympic gold medal. Their first medal in athletics, but a gold medal from Pakistan's Arshad Nadeem with an Olympic record of 92 metres 97, which is incredible he wasn't the favorite going into it we know that he's been throwing incredibly these past few years but a truly incredible feat because pakistan have only won now 11 medals at the olympics ever most of them in hockey and i think this is just a moment as well jess for the pakistan and south asian diaspora around the world because a lot of the time we grow up as south asian people being told we're too weak for sport uh, especially in football, we actually just released a documentary on Sky Sports News called Hidden Talent, where we spoke about the kind of stereotypes that South Asian athletes face. That is one that football is here a lot. You're too weak, you're too small. And I think having Arshad Nadeem, who is a you know Olympic champion now, throw that far in a, a javelin event, which is kind of the epitome of physical strength, is very, very exciting and something that uh, Pakistanis all over the world will be very proud of. Wow, what an achievement. Imagine trying to tell him who's just thrown a javelin 92 metres that he's too small and too weak. Absolutely incredible. Miriam, for your updates, as always, we'll see you tomorrow.